Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. This film is being made about me because I'm special. Oh, it's going all dark. What's hit me? What's it all dark? What's happened? Oh, look! Happy birthday to you. This is a bittersweet birthday party. Hayley Okines has just turned six, but due to a rare genetic disease, her body is older than her grandmother's. I used to really look forward to her birthdays, but I don't anymore. All right, she might be six, but when you think that she's aging eight to ten times faster than us, well, your maths can do that. Oh, you're blow harder than that. Go on. Go on. Two years ago, we made a film about Haley. She has a genetic ageing disease called hutchinson gilford progeria. Since our last film, Haley has aged by the equivalent of 20 years. Her life is flying by, but she lives it to the full. So, for the past year, she's kept a diary for us. At my birthday, I was six years old. I like being six because I feel all grown up. Hayley has grown up a lot since the last time we filmed her. When mum Kerry picks her up on her birthday, it's December and she's well into her second year of school. Are you going to do anything nice for your birthday? I'm going to go bowling. No, you're not. You said you were going bowling. I heard you on the phone. Oh, that's not fair, is it? <laughs> well, I have to think of somewhere else now. You have to think of somewhere else? Yeah. So you can go bowling then. Well, we can. But it won't be a surprise. No, it won't be. No. <laughs> Emotionally, she's grown up a lot more. She's a lot more independent. She's got her own mind now. If she doesn't want to do anything, she won't do it. <laughs> oh, she knows she's going now, so... Never mind. It's present time back at the family home. There's Dad Mark and brother Lewis, now 18 months old. <laughs> Even teenage sister Stacy has left her bedroom for the occasion. Say happy birthday. Six years ago today, Kerry thought she had a perfect, healthy baby. But Haley didn't grow like one. At first, doctors were baffled. Then, after an agonising year long wait, progeria was diagnosed. Haley's name was added to a tiny list of only 40 known cases worldwide. <laughs> Gorgeous. Who are you? Tinkerbell. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go bowling in that though. Oh, I am. You can't. I am. You'll get a bit cold. No, I'll find you something nice to wear. As each birthday passes. Haley's progeria leaves its mark. Her body is taking on features of old age, such as a bony frame. That's a general thing with progeria, that so none of them have any, hardly any fat layer under their skin, so it always looks like they're a bag of bones. <gasps> what is it? What is Thank it? you. Oh, it's Swan Lake. <gasps> but the most obvious wow. sign of progeria is loss of hair. Wow. Let's try it on. Oh, well, oh, let's try it on then. Lovely. Yeah. 
I mean, she didn't have much hair from the from the last time you was filming, um, but she's lost a, the hair that was there. You want to take it off while you put this on? Right. Yeah, go on then. Good girl. Good girl. She actually had her last bit of hair tied up in a hair wrap at Disney. And uh, when it came out, the rest of the hair came out with it, which was all a bit disappointed about. It's very sparkly, isn't it? Oh, look at that. Gorgeous. Well. <laughs> wow. That's a photo. For my birthday, I went bowling. Hayley might have rumbled her birthday surprise, but inside the bowling alley are some unexpected guests. Hey, guys. We've got uh, Derek and Pam, who's Hayley's grandparents. That's Kerry's mum and dad. And Kerry's sister, Janie, over there. And that's her daughter, Sophie, and her son, Jack. Jack. Right, and that's about it, I think. She's definitely got more verbal, definitely. But I suppose because we see her all the time, we don't really notice that much. She's thinner, isn't she? And she's, yeah. her features are more yeah. pronounced. I mean, she's still so full of life. And we don't treat her any different. Because I think if you treat her different, then the other kids would notice it and think, well, we're... Yeah. She knows she's got progeria, but... I... I don't think she really knows what it is. No. It could be, like, measles or chickenpox or... You know, I, I don't think... I don't think she realises what it entails. So what is progeria then? No, you haven't got hair and you never grow. Does it matter that the other kids at school have got hair and you haven't? It doesn't matter. I'll tell you the funny story. <laughs> and one day, yeah, um, I, I, um, someone had told me, did I have a wish? And I said, next. Because um, all the other people had hair, yeah, and I didn't. <laughs> it's early April. Hayley has a day off school. She'll be spending it with her care nurse, who has a very important role in her life. She's my special friend. She's my best friend ever. Jane Streeter works for James House, a hospice providing home help for terminally ill children. Um, Jane's fantastic. Um, she's her job title is a palliative nurse who cares for somebody that's dying. Um, but to Hayley, she's just a best friend. What would you like to do? Well, I've got an idea for today. I thought we could do lunch with Mummy and Daddy. Shh, whisper. Secret. Should we make them lunch? Should we do... Mm -hmm. Shh, close your ears, Mum. OK. Should we make pizza? Come on, should we make pizza? Yeah. Jane combines nursing qualifications with experience as a play therapist and bereavement counsellor. See you in a minute, then. All right, are you going to do the car? Are you going to do it? Through fun activities, Jane explores serious issues with Hayley. Her latest concern is a mysterious sore spot. Right, we're going to Sainsbury's, get some shopping for the, the pizza, and then we'll be busy chopping later, yeah? Yeah. But before we do that, while you're doing that, Ronnie's coming. And do you know why she's coming? No. Oh, you keep getting that red mark, don't you? And that's because you need a softer seat. I don't care. You don't care? Oh, I do, because I don't want you to get sore. And then that might stop you from going swimming and doing lots of other things. This trip to the supermarket allows Kerry and Mark to discuss Haley's problems with an occupational therapist. Hello. Hello, sweetie. You all right? 
What I'd really like to do today is just to run through some basic information, get an up-to-date assessment sorted out. As with many of her elderly cases, Ronnie Campbell is assessing six-year-old Haley's ability to perform daily tasks. She will then recommend equipment to help. What are we going to look first? What's her understanding of her condition? Um, she knows she's it? got progeria. Mm -hmm. She doesn't know life she's expectancy. Six, yeah, she? she's six at the moment. Um, we've decided not to tell her anything about life expectancy. I don't think she should know. She doesn't need to know. Told? What have you been told? We've been about told it? the average age is about 13. Right. <clears throat> um, but they've had them as young as six die. And I think the eldest one was probably in. Was it 22? 22. Yeah. Susanna was 22, passed away last year. Right. Um, but we haven't told Hayley. Right. One. Okay. Two. What are we going to do with them now? I know there's various characteristics of progeria, such as the arthritic side of it, um, the, the obviously the hair loss, the, the, the skin, the general frailty. Mm -hmm. Can you just, in a nutshell, sum up for me how it affects Hayley in the particular stage? I mean, also, obviously, it's progressive as well, yeah. so you're going to notice changes in yeah. her and things getting more difficult. I'm just pushing it on my own. Are you? Right, don't crash into anybody then. She's very conscious of her hair. She was, was, she was all right until she started school, wasn't it? Yeah. We didn't have any problems with her about her hair. She never took any notice of it, did she? Until she started school, and then because she used to go everywhere without a bandana or hat on or anything like that. But now she won't go down. She won't go to school without a hat on, will she? Hairy onion. Hairy onion. Thank you. Something for Hayley. Something for Hayley. Something for Louie. Something for Louie. Thank you. And the shopping list. My shopping list. That's your shopping list, isn't it? What about the arthritic -y side of things? She has uh, quite a lot of stiffness in her fingers. She can't straighten her fingers out. OK. Um, knees? Yeah, she can't bend down properly put her shoes on, can yeah, she? Yeah, she's having problems putting shoes on. So it's general, as you would expect in an old person, yes. general stiffness, yeah. general sort of aches and pains. Hello. Hiya. Hi. Hi. How are you? Come in. Hello. 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 Hi. Hello. Hello. Who's this? <gasps> hello. Hi, Ronnie. You're right. Meet Hayley. Oh, what have you got? Look, this is Ronnie Hayley. So hello. Hello. How are you? Okay. Are you happy to talk to me for a minute? So what's what's happening with the old button? Is there any improvement? Just show Ronnie. Oh, you don't have to show me. No, it's. So we worry about her um, sitting still for too long because she's got no fat round her bum. Um, she's getting sores, pressure sores on a bum when she's sitting down for a long time or obviously in bed, she's sleeping all night in bed. Bend your legs. Bend your legs. <laughs> <laughs> she's They're doing their best. I mean, obviously, they don't know hey, that much you? about yeah. what's going to be the best thing for her. Hang on a minute, no, you've got the We've had her spe special chair come hop, hop. to sit at the table eating her dinner with because she takes ages Ooh. eating her dinner. She takes sometimes up to an hour just to eat her dinner. It's OK, it's not perfect, is it? It may be that it wouldn't need to do until we can... As progeria makes life increasingly difficult, the list of special equipment, like this chair, will grow. Already installed are easy-to-use taps and door handles. They help Hayley to maintain some independence. Jane comes to see me. So we can play games. She is a friend. With her, I do lots of things like cooking and making things. What do you say? One, two, three. Ta -da! Wow, look at that! What, all of it? Louis, oh. can I come? Wow! Come on, Louie. Louie, that's it. Follow him. That's the best pizza I've ever seen. Cos I know Jane has, like, confidentiality, but she said, obviously, if there's big issues that she thinks we should be concerned about, then she'll obviously tell me and Mark, but she doesn't want to let Hayley know that whatever she tells Jane, Jane's going to come straight back and tell us. So, to a certain degree, I think their time's their time. Hayley, this pizza's delicious. Jane did say that she had a really good session with her last time, so... But what they talk about, I don't know. That's 
That's nothing to do with me. That's their time and... Can't eat any more pizza. <laughs> you full? I am. I'm just talking about Jane. All right. They run after the donkey. Ee-oh, ee-oh, ee-oh. <laughs> hasn't asked why she has Jane, does she? No, not really. No, I don't think she has. She's just, like, pleased that she's got someone like that, I think. Maybe it's just... I know she's got a teacher's at school and that, but it's someone else from the outside that she can open up to. Now, um, I just I've been, said... uh, right from the beginning, a bit s sceptical about... Um, those, say, people like that. I'm not sure if I really mean that. But um, as Perdue progresses, there's going to be a lot of things where she's going to be saying, look, why am I aching so much and, mm. and stuff like that? You know, why can't I bear my fingers so much? And sort of things like that is going to be going on. So it's going to help in that bit. Mm -hmm. Bye. See you, Kerry. Thanks, Jane. Speak to you soon. Say bye-bye. Bye. So thank you. Thank you. Even though it looked very superficial what I was doing today, it's all about building trust and relationships and feeling that she can be comfortable with me to be able to talk. Because she wants to protect Kerry, she's not yeah. always able to say what she truly perhaps feels, but with me, you know, she can say what she likes. She's getting to that age now where she's beginning to question it a little, little bit more and having much more awareness, probably a lot more aware, being a lot more aware than we give her credit for because her peers are questioning her more at school and being very much more open and frank. Because the parents say, oh, hayley has got progeria, what does that mean, mummy? And then their parents are honest with their friends and say, well, that means she's going to die when she's very young. And, of course, children are very honest and they go to school and they say to Hayley, my mum said you're going to die. And these are things that, obviously, she will hear in the playground. <laughs> Hayley has been at school for a year and a half. So far, her personality, with a bit of childhood innocence, seems to have protected her in the playground. But there are signs of difficulty ahead, so Mark and Kerry want to address them with the school. This is like a progress record, uh, sort of parent-teacher consult to see how everything's going at school with Hayley, make sure she's not... Uh, lacking behind everything in her work and that. And also we have a little chat about making sure that there's no bullying going on, which is one of the things we've been a little bit concerned about in the past. Um, I think there has been a little bit of conversation going on. Children have been asking Mrs Haynes why Hayley hasn't got hair and will she ever grow hair. Um, but I think they've sorted that out, which we'll probably talk more about when we're in there, so... I've brought all her books and have a look through, although some of those you saw obviously at the last parents' evening, but there's some, obviously some new ones, so you can see hopefully the progression okay. through the year. Yeah, because I was just saying that I was a bit concerned about the amount of time that she has off. Is yeah, she falling behind? No, no, she's not, because she works really hard when yeah. she comes back and she just gets on with it. Um, I think, yeah, that's the beauty of her, you know, she does have time off, mm. but she enjoys the time away, which is great. Yeah. Comes back, tells us all about it. I'm counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Come in, ready or not? The Haley's problems are not academic, but they're just mobility to a certain extent, so you make allowances for those. So I wouldn't say we've made great difference. We just make allowances and just treat her as much as possible as one of the class. I'd mentioned to Mark as well that you had a little thing a little while ago, children was asking why she, yes. why she didn't have any hair. Well, they are, I think, becoming more aware of what's going on. You know, basically, I just talked about the fact, you know, I've got a couple of children, I said, right, what colour eyes have you, this one got, and what colour eyes, right. like, can you do anything about it? No, that's how you are. Got some more up, said, right, you've got blonde hair, blue hair, you know, right. whatever. That's how you are. And then we talked about the fact that Hayley, you know, hasn't got any hair, and obviously, unfortunately, that's part of her condition, and that's, mm. that's how it is. Whoever's hiding, yes, they stay there until somebody finds them. She is so popular because of her sunny nature. She just attracts, you know, the good from other people, which is really nice to see. What's going on then today? They're all running around and I can't catch them. You're all running around. She definitely can't catch me, but I'm faster than this lot. Are you the fastest in the no, car? No, I am. Nice. Yeah, yeah. What? Let's have a race then. Hayley's popular, 
but there will always be times when she's left out. Her aging body lets her down, and few weeks go by without a day off school for a hospital visit. I see lots of doctors because I have bacteria. Dr. Winkup looks at my heart. Today, Hayley is seeing a paediatric cardiologist. Heart disease is the most common killer in progeria children. It's important to monitor blood samples, cholesterol levels and thickening of the arteries. So Hayley sees him every six months. <laughs> <laughs> Hello Hayley, how are you? Hello. Good to see you. <laughs> I do Hiya. come in. Nice to see Hiya. you. up, how are you? Very well, thank you. And you? Fine, thank you. Come and have a seat. You can sit down, Hayley. So we're going to do two things today. We're going to do a recording of your heart, so to measure the electrical activity. And then we're going to have a look at your heart. And we're going to put some jelly on your chest. Because you've had it done before, haven't you? So you know all of this, really. Remember when Lewis was in Mummy's tummy? And he's come and had a look. Same thing. So, and then we're going to see you a picture of your heart on that television screen. Wow, that'd be good. That's good. <laughs> right, Hayley, can you, I bet you can't leap up onto that bed. Absolutely. I bet that's too yeah, high. Oh, can you do it? Can you do it? Can you do it? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Brilliant. Just for Is the it reflection. Cold? No, I hope not. <laughs> oh. Is that all right? So we're looking for extra calcium, extra thickening, yeah. um, poor contraction of the heart, as if it was effectively a heart that's getting old. We was told when we went to the last meeting in Germany that the children actually suffer from thickening of the heart muscle. Yes. Can you see any problems with everything that's all right? It looks okay, actually. Yeah. yeah. Looks very nice. Can you see a change from last, the last one she had? No. no. Certainly no, nothing um, progressive at all. That's the part so this that's is the like that. <laughs> That's what makes the blood go around your body. Oh. It's very clever, isn't it? Yeah. Your numbers are good, Hayley, and the pictures are super. <laughs> so that? you... Hold on, I've got jelly off. Do you enjoy that? Do you want to have a look at what? Oh, no, it's no, still. It's very <laughs> still. <laughs> yeah, you, it'll look, be messy jelly all over. Look. look at that. <laughs> the biggest medical breakthrough that's happened over the last few months, or over a year or so, is that uh, the progeria gene, that, or the gene actually causes progeria, has been identified. The bottom line that I that I understand from this is that um, mm -hmm. progeria can now be diagnosed from blood test. Now, when Hayley was diagnosed, um, it actually took guys in Great Ormond Street Hospital a year to diagnose her. Um, in, in that year, I mean, we, we went through like cystic fibrosis, uh, this, that and the other, all the tests, batteries of tests, and so it took a year. Now it can be done in a matter of, well, a couple of weeks, I think. It's knowing a bit more as well. Obviously, they've now identified the gene which looks good, possibly not in Haley's lifetime, but for future cu for cure for progeria, which is it's, it's quite good. And you know these things are going on sort of the other side of the world, which is a comfort. Data and samples from children like Haley, and of course money, will help the ongoing research effort. But today's visit to the hospital has been more about reassurance than medical progress. So ECG I'm happy with, ECHO I'm happy with, so from the cardiac side, which is really my main involvement, yep. um, I think things are going really very well. So okay. we'll see you um, six months' time with me. OK. Oh, Brilliant. Thank you very Lovely. much. Thank you. Good to Thank see you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, bye bye, Hayley. You have to take your parents away now, I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Have a lovely, lovely time and see you when you're a little bit older, OK? Yeah. OK, let go of my hand now. Let go. <laughs> It's the end of Hayley's second year at school and the start of a long holiday. <laughs> you looking forward to your holiday? Yeah. How long have you got off? Six weeks. Six oh, six weeks. weeks. Oh, it's the sun, isn't it? Oh. With no homework to worry about, Hayley's friend Erin has come round to play. We played in my Wendy house and we were dressing up as princesses. Shall I go and get dressed upstairs? Yeah. Hey, what is that one you're wearing? Um, one of them things that people get married with. 
For some months, Mark and Kerry have been discussing whether to introduce Haley to a children's hospice. It's been a difficult decision. Hello. <laughs> uh, well, Demelza House is a hospice for sick children. Um, we first heard about that through Jane Streeter. Um, she thought perhaps it'd be quite nice for Haley to go up and spend some time up there. But yes, there is a stigma. So Mark wasn't interested in talking about it or even going up and seeing it or getting involved with it. So you come round here and then you have to do all the cooking, do you? Yes, and tidying up. No, because um, this is Erin's house in the game and so I was going to come and sleep round and she was already making dinner before I came round. Basically, in my head, I had it that hospice is where you go to die, which is what it is. I mean, that is basically what, if you look in the dictionary, that is what, what it is. But um, I, I said to Kerry right from the start that I don't want to have anything to do with that yet. I'm not ready for that side of it yet. I know that Hayley's not. I just thought that it would be a lovely retreat that just me and Hayley could go to or we could all go up as a family and spend time together. Um, but it came as a bit of a shock when Mark didn't share my feelings. He was very dead against it. No, she's not going. No, I'm not going. Which was really difficult because I thought he would be as willing as I was. What's your favourite thing to pretend to be? A princess or a Wendy. I would pick a pattern, of course. It could be anything. Lily, yes, we go. Oh, thank you, I love beef. <laughs> And some chicken beef. I stayed at Nana's and Pops's house. I like going to stay with Nana and Pops because they spoil me. And it's nice when Hayley goes up there for the weekend because Mum's got no other children. They're all sort of grown up and can look after himself. So they just devote their time to Hayley. And when she's there, she's just sport rotten. One second, one minute. Bob's is my best friend. He's the nicest granddad in the whole world. <laughs> Hurry up. Hey, up we got him. Yes. <laughs> Whoa, we squishy, you're right. Come on in. I'm going to have a look at this. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Put him down near the ground now. Hayley, go! When she stays here and I have to bath her and I look at her and I think, God, she's as old... She's older than me. Her body is, is older than me. Test. Okay. Okay. Down you go then. I worked in a care home for about seven years, um, caring for the elderly. And the similarity, they're there. Hayley's body is like the people I used to care for. I have to rub um, cream into her skin. Um, and give her medication. And when you're bathing her and you're drawing her, you can see her joints are, are deforming and her skin's transparent and there's all the all the signs are the same. Put some on your head? Yeah. Yes, please. Top your head, then. Oh, <laughs> 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 oh dear. That's all right. You look funny doing that. <laughs> I think that's too much. No, it's not. It's, no. it's too much. It's not, is it? It's all shiny. Ever so shiny. <laughs> Size? I have to make sure that her bed's padded really well because. She has to sleep next to us on the floor. She won't sleep in the bedroom. Put your things down there. Okay. <laughs> Forgot this one. <laughs> your milk's up there, but it's a little bit hot. You're going to give Come me a kiss? Come on, Baby Annabelle. Oh, I was Pops to go and get her for you. Kiss, can I go and get Baby Annabelle? Kiss. Mm. Hug. <laughs> Hug. Ah. 
Nine. 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 Nice. Next day, an outing Haley's grandparents have been dreading. Why did you want to come here? people who died. Well, you can't see the people that have died, can you? You can on the stones. You can only see where they're buried. Hmm. Can't you? One's buried there. That is very old moth. Sorry? That's very old, so it's got moss on it. Yeah, that must be very old. We took her out a couple of weekends and we actually drove, as you do, past a graveyard. And she kept saying, oh, I'd like to go in there, I'd like to go and see. Um, and we said, we'll check it with Mummy and Daddy first and then maybe we'll take you. This one was only, look, the daughter of the above and she was only 14. That's not very old. Interesting. Interesting. Why? Why do you think? Because they died. To see who died. Have you finished yet? No. No? I don't think it registered. It was just curiosity. And I think now she's done it, then I don't she won't ask again, I don't think. Looks like a mummy chest. What do you call it a mummy chest? So it looks like one. <laughs> like the Egyptians. <laughs> <laughs> You nutter. Mm. Oh, your leg's okay now. Yeah. Do you want to go now? Mm. Okay. Okay. If your legs are alright. Yeah, my legs are fine, darling. I'm just getting old. Oh, do your little legs are getting old now too, aren't they? Yeah, that's some six. So that is a good age. That's a very big age. Might be a husband and a wife. Because mm, sometimes they are buried with each other. Well, I'd like to be buried with Pops. Mm. But Pops might die before you, because he's getting very, very young. Yeah, well, then you. <laughs> well, yeah, but then he'll wait for me, won't he? Because we've actually talked about. Um... whether she's going to be buried or cremated. That was hard to think that one day she's going to be there. When you ask your Nana and Pops about graveyards and what they were for, what did they say? Um, they said it's where people go and when they die. And what do they do when they're in the graveyard? Don't do a single thing except for sleep. That's nice. Every single time. Can't even have dinner. Or breakfast or lunch. Because they'd be lying fast asleep. Because they're dead. When people um, are in the gravy in, or in the underground, yeah, um, they go up to heaven. So it, um, every person that goes to a church, yeah, thinks that um, someone is in, in the in the graveyard, but um, they're really up in heaven. Since his initial refusal, Mark has decided to give the children's hospice a try. It's the morning of the family's first visit, and despite the change of heart, the atmosphere is tense. Yeah. We're having our first visit up to Demel's house, um, and I sort of pass the buck, really. I let Jane explain to her. Um, but she just explained that Demel's a house is a place where children go that are not very well and poorly <clears throat> and sort of prepared her that there's going to be children up there that are handicapped and can't talk and making lots of noises and... Um, but as far as what a hospice actually is, I'm not ready for her to know yet, so... so it's a bit difficult cos Mark had his problems in coming to terms with what a hospice was all about. Um, but for me, a hospice is as much as living as it is for dying. So it'd just be a nice place where we can go and have fun and and be together, Yay. spend a bit of time together. Okay. Thanks. All right. Yeah. See ya. <laughs>
The visit was highly emotional for Mark and Kerry. They asked us not to film their guided tour. But for Hayley, the visit was just another fun day out. Tamelsa House is a place where we go to have fun. I like it. I like the cheesy and the light room. Seeing Demelza House with his own eyes did help Mark to put his fears to rest. When we got there, it was completely different. It was like everybody playing and happy and everything. And I wanted to go for Kerry because I knew it was going to be an important part for Kerry to go, so I needed to support her, which is one of the main reasons that I went out there. And I was pleasantly surprised when we got out there as well. Pam has also been sceptical about the hospice. I don't really think, for me, it's necessary to go there. I can have her here, and, and that's fine. I, I don't need to. Unless Kerry wants me to go with her one weekend, then yes, I'll go, because I'll support her in everything that she does. And if she really needed me to, then I would go. But I wouldn't voluntarily go. With the holidays in full swing, Kerry and Hayley are here for a family outing. Pam has been waiting to hear about the hospice visit. Oh, hi, honey. Hi, hiya. How are you? I've missed you. Tell me about yesterday. Shall we take this off for a minute? Tell me about yesterday. Um, Where did we go? I went to Tomasa House. Did you? Yeah. Was it good? Yeah. But we're going to stay a few weeks and you and, uh, and, you and Puppy can come because I've um, got a jacuzzi there. You've got a jacuzzi? A jacuzzi? Yeah. yeah. And you want me and Pops to come, do you? Yeah, yeah. she says she wants you to go up. What, to take you by ourselves or go with Mummy? Um, with all our family. All our family. Mm. Well, I think that might be a nice day out. Shall we talk about that later then? Because we've got to go soon to go to the castle. Yeah. Okay. I went to Leeds Castle. I liked it because I was a princess. Got all her makeup. Yeah, Hayley. Hayley, look. You see that picture up there? Yeah. That's what a princess looks like. In the olden days. Uh, if this was your castle, yeah. what would you do? Um, I'll just wait for my um, prince. Yeah. <laughs> and what about your dress when you get married? What's your dress going to look like? Mm -hmm. It's going to look beautiful. Will, will you have a big veil mm. and a big tiara? Mm. What colours would they be? Pink. Oh, every single thing pink. <laughs> but you can't have everything pink. Mind you, if you're the princess, you can, can't you? Because you can have anything you want, can't you? Mm. Mm. OK, hey. then. That's Princess Hayley to you. <laughs> <laughs> when you walk through them doors, is it Do you think not... it's a hospice? Yeah. No. Cos I think... If you walk through them doors, you just naturally think that... No, I, did, I thought I'd be a bit worried. Mark was a bit scared to start with. <clears throat> but I didn't. I just It was just so full of fun and the kids... I mean, there were disabled kids there. There were kids that were worse, worse off than Hayley. Mm. So you think yourself a bit lucky, really, but it was, just, it was just such a lovely atmosphere. You say a hospice and you don't want to think about... Mm. Well, you don't think, I didn't think about that when I was up there at all, not at all. didn't think about it once. The only time I got upset was when she asked if I wanted to see the cold room, but I said I wasn't ready to do that yet, and I did get upset then. What's the cold room? Well, it's where they do go to, to die. They've got a refrigerated bed, and but that's just one room, and that's off in a separate wing, and, and I didn't want to see that. I wasn't ready to see that, so... No, I don't think I'll No, do but it's a lovely atmosphere. You just walk in there, and it's... Just so friendly and the kids all running around and she loved it. She wanted to get she was watching the videos and it's nice, you'd have to go out there. Well maybe if me and Dad uh, well I, I'm not saying that Dad will want to straight away, but he if finds he it doesn't, a bit difficult like Mark. Dad just can't seem to yeah, get no. his head round it. You haven't got to go. If she doesn't mention it anymore, then just don't 
Well, how often do we turn her down? No, yeah, I know. At the end of the day, hospice is where, if you choose your child to die, but that's not my place for her to die. Yeah, well, I don't so really it's just... want to go into that at the minute. <laughs> Hayley? Hayley, if you're a princess, does that mean we've got a curtsy? Hell. <laughs> what is it about you that makes you special mm. and a princess? Because I've got Gary. Is that why you should be a princess? Hmm. Seriously? Because I'm a special princess. Who told you that then? Did you, was that your mum and dad? No, I just found it all myself. Really? Mm. Who did you ask then? Nobody. I asked myself. You asked yourself? Yeah. What, and because people told you you had progeria and you were special, you thought, hmm, I think I'd make a pretty good princess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hayley's summer holidays are nearly over. Her special friend, Care nurse Jane Streeter has come round to play and to talk. Go oh, back to school soon. Mm. Off to work. Mm. I know, but you like it, don't you, really? See all your friends again. That'd be good, won't it? Yeah. So I am very popular. Popular, are you? And what does that mean? Um, I've got loads of good friends. Excellent. Yeah, but I don't like it sometimes because everyone would be like, hello, Hayley, hello, Hayley. Oh, is it a hard work being mm. a star? Mm. But mm. is it OK to be sad sometimes? Yeah. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Because everybody has to, has to be sad. <gasps> Listen how much you remember and how are you doing so well? I think Hayley's at a stage where she knows more than what she's letting on. I think she knows it for such a lot. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's not unhealthy. I think, um, I think as adults we need to be very careful how we're talking around her and what's being said. Because like that I was actually mentioned when I was talking to somebody else, I turned around sort of speaking about to Mel's house and saw it was very much for living and not just for dying and I sort of looked over and I could see that perhaps she wasn't looking at me, but I thought, I wonder if she heard me, and I thought, I've really got to stop saying things like that in front of her. Because mm. she know I know she knows more than she's letting on. Mm. But I sort of try and prise it out of her, and I'm not getting anything out of her. I think what you need to do is be really careful about what's your need and what's Hayley's need, because Hayley's issues are very different to what your issues. So your pain and everything you're feeling mm -hmm. is because you know what yeah, the future's going to bring, bring and how painful that is for you. Mm -hmm. Whereas for a child, it's very much her perception and her view of life and everything is much more innocent. Who can do the washing up for me? She went and spent the weekend with my mum and dad and they went to a graveyard. She was wanted to go to a graveyard. So that might be her way of actually trying to make sense of some of the things that she might be hearing. But I just wondered what happens when... She'll ask you questions when you're least yeah. prepared. Yes. Because she won't want to hear. She, she'll be a bit nervous of the answer. So she's always going to ask them delicate questions and difficult questions when you're saying, get your school bag, Hayley, why haven't you got your shoes on, where's your coat? And she'll ask the fatal question. Mum, am I going to die? And you'll be like... Mm. So you need to prepare yourself for that. Mm -hmm. But you need to answer her, still recognise that it's a busy time, and say, we need to talk about that later, because that's a big subject. Okay. And be honest. Say, yeah, we're all going to die. Mum's going to die, Louie's going to die, but it's good. At least she's talking about it. And at the moment, I think she's absolutely fine, Kerry. She's going to want to know about what's happening soon. When she, as she's getting older, she's going to want to know what's happening with the disease and what it's all about. I don't know, we just got to deal with it as it goes along, I think. I'm, I'm not trying to make any plans about it. We're going to go old and grey, or greyer than I already am, you know, worrying about it, so deal with it as it comes along. Hayley's been back at school for a couple of weeks now, but she won't be going today. She's not sick, and she hasn't got a doctor's appointment. She's a VIP for the day. A good friend of mine's sorted out a trip to Chelsea, and... Uh, She's going to be the mascot for the European Champions League game against FC Porto. Oh, 
A little surprise out here, Hayley. Shut your eyes. We've organised a stretch limo to take her up in as well. And also Charlotte, my old, eldest daughter's coming. She's another mad Chelsea fan. Tell me if I'm going to bump into anything. No peeping. Shut your eyes. <laughs> Looking forward to that. It's going to be a big, big event. Go on then, open up. <laughs> 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 I don't want to spend my life preparing for her to die. I want to have my life with her and the other kids for living. How are you going to be about going out onto that pitch? Um, I don't know. You're going to be a bit scared? Mm -hmm. Charlotte nervous? Showing Charlotte's most excited one out of all of us today. <laughs> is her first no, I am. I'm the most excited out of all of us, Dad. The stuff we've done with Hayley, I probably wouldn't have been able to do if Hayley wasn't there and uh, I feel privileged, you know, that she's given me that opportunity. She's so full of life, and it's just nice to see her like that. And she doesn't wallow in self-pity. She's such a happy child. Hayley does things that most children will never do. But then, she's not like most children. She is special, and perhaps it's due to her disease. Or maybe it just comes down to the way she is. I don't quite know what it is, but everybody seems to take to her. And she's so bubbly and she just loves... Well, she loves lots, really. And congratulations to those match mascot, Hayley O'Keefe. Looking forward to my next birthday when I will be seven years old. Being seven years old will make me feel even more, more grown up.